Okay, I'm Sarasota County Sheriff Kurt Hoffman. I want to thank you guys for coming here to headquarters. Uh, over at the 6,000 block of Tarawa, we have uh, a crime scene over there. Obviously, we've got our detectives that are working and the neighbors over there. So we ask that you come here to headquarters to not uh, disturb their work that they're doing and also the neighborhood. And I appreciate you guys coming here. What I'd like to do is just give you some basic facts as I know them in this particular case. I uh, just left the scene a few minutes ago myself. I've listened to the 911 call and I'll be happy to take any questions uh, that you have. Obviously, bearing in mind this investigation is ongoing, as I said, we literally have detectives still on scene uh, investigating, interviewing witnesses, and doing neighborhood canvassing. All victims in this case have opted into Marcy's Law, so we've got uh, the confidentiality issue that we've got to deal with uh, as we work through this case. At 9.06 a.m., our 911 center received a call reporting a man was threatening a woman with a gun. She indicated the two were in an argument yesterday, and she awoke today to find the man pointing the gun at her. Deputies responded to the scene within approximately five minutes. They attempted to make contact with the suspect, ask him to come out of the house. He would initially not comply with the deputy's commands. Deputies eventually made contact via telephone uh, and convinced the suspect to come to a window where they could see him. He stood in the window, had his hands in the air where the deputies could see them. The suspect then invited deputies into the house. Uh, the, the, um, the victim was barricaded at this time in the back bedroom. She had called 911 uh, and indicated, as I said, that she woke up and found a firearm pointed at her, and it sounds like he pointed at her possibly uh, multiple times. Uh, four deputies uh, entered the house at that time, uh, confronted the suspect. As I said, he had his hands up from their conversation at the, at the window. Deputies were on the outside. He was on the inside when they were having that conversation. Uh, deputies were continuing to give verbal commands, make sure he kept his hands in the air, try to de-escalate the situation, uh, at which time the suspect reached behind his back uh, in what appeared to be his waistband, pulled out a semi-automatic firearm, had it at the low ready position, uh, and chambered around by racking the slide on the firearm. As the firearm came into the uh, up position towards the deputies who were uh, near the doorway of the living room, um, two of the deputies fired their weapons, discharged uh, at the suspect. The suspect is uh, deceased. Uh, next of kin has been notified of the suspect. The suspect is 47-year-old Brian Underwood. He has one prior arrest for domestic battery in 2014 out of Citrus County. Deputies have responded to this location in the past for other reported family disturbances. However, none of those situations have led to an arrest. Also present during the incident was Underwood's mother. She exited the home during the disturbance and left the front door ajar so the deputies uh, could go inside. The four involved deputies are considered victims, as I mentioned, of aggravated assault under Marcy's law, and their identity is being withheld at this time. Uh, the victim in this case, and she is a victim of aggravated, uh, aggravated domestic uh, assault uh, with a firearm. Uh, she's also not being, uh, her name's not being released uh, under Marcy's law. This is the uh, second domestic related uh, incident that our deputies have been involved in with an officer involved shooting in the last 10 days. We had a third uh, incident where a subject came out uh, down in Venice with a knife and the deputy had to physically engage uh, that individual. So this is uh, still a very dangerous uh, profession and we handle these calls as professionally as we can. It's unfortunate that this uh, and also the call from a few days ago ended uh, with the suspect uh, losing their life, but uh, that's a choice that they made and uh, the deputies responded uh, what appears to be appropriately. So with that, I'll take any questions that you may have about the, the situation. So last week, uh, you guys ended up releasing the, the footage, or I guess not the footage, but the photo of the machete that was used. Um, can we expect anything like that with this investigation as well? Yeah, I, I would assume as uh, the, the investigation progresses, we'll try to get some of that information out. They're literally behind the crime scene tape right now, going door to door, talking to the uh, to the witnesses. A few of the detectives have made their way back to headquarters, but the majority of them are still on scene. So, yes. Do we know if there's anyone else in the house at the time, or was it just the... So what we know is obviously the 911 caller uh, was uh, in the house uh, in the rear bedroom calling 911. At one point, uh, the uh, deceased, the suspect's mother, was in the house and she exited. Uh, so at this time, we believe only those three were involved in the situation. Was it was the house owned by the gentleman who is now deceased, or is it? Broken? I believe the house is owned by the deceased's mother, who was uh, present there. The house is in her name. Was this, if that's the case, was this not where the couple resided? Were they visiting or something? Or? Yeah, I believe they're residing there. They, they both live there, and it's owned by uh, the deceased mother. Okay, so who called 911? 
So the, the victim uh, that was in the back bedroom of the house, a female victim called 911 about 9.06 uh, and indicated that she had woke up and a, a firearm was pointed in her face when she woke up. Uh, and listening to the 911 call, which I did just a few minutes ago before I came down here to talk to you, uh, it sounds like he was pointing the firearm at her, uh, not only when she woke up out of bed, but uh, at some other point during that, the incident inside the house. What's the relationship between the suspect and victim? We believe they're boyfriend and girlfriend, not married. Anything else? Okay, I appreciate your time. Thank you very much.